Hey there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Olivia Diaz and today I'm going to be showing you a little bit of the Ranger line of resin and alcohol inks. Uh, Tim Holtz was so sweet, sweet enough to send me so many things to try out in this video today, including some of the Ranger line of resin. I did not know that Ranger made resin at all, so I was really surprised to receive that. They also make uh, some tools for mixing, cups and spoons, and then he sent me a ton, a ton of alcohol inks from the Ranger line. And so, thank you, Tim. <laughs> thank you so much for all of these inks. There are so many here. Um, I'm gonna be trying out some of their regular alcohol inks like these in so many beautiful colors, but I'm also going to be trying out some of the metallic ones, or I should say the alloys, like these. They also have mixatives to use with their alcohol inks. And then what I'm super, super over the moon excited about is the pearls. I have been wanting to try these and <laughs> now is my chance. They have so many colors. Colors for every combination that you can think of and I'm so excited to try these out. In the video today, I'm going to be using this set that has Sublime, Tranquil, and Intrigue. These are my favorite colors in general, so I'm so excited to give these a shot in the alcohol pearls. So stay tuned, let's get started using alcohol inks in resin from Ranger. And I wanna say this too, the reason why I chose to review these inks is because I was looking for a wide range of colors. Um, something that I have experienced with other alcohol ink companies is you'll get a few types of, of pink or maybe a few types of purple, um, but not really a really comprehensive line. With Ranger, they've been making these inks for years and they've added on to the colors every season, it seems like. They have so many colors. So if I'm creating something, I know that I'll be able to find exactly the color, the pigment that I want, and I don't have to compromise on the colors. Um, this is just a fraction of the colors that they have. And they and like as you can see, I lean more towards the brights than I do um, darker shades. But they have a wide range of colors that aren't bright like these, but are more dark and deep um, for those who are making other kinds of items. So these are the colors that I've chosen to try out with the Ranger resin. Uh, I'm starting out with the regular alcohol inks in Purple Twilight, Limeade, Valencia, and Honeycomb. And then for the alloys, I'll be using Minced, Statue, and Gilded. Then for the pearls, it'll be Sublime, Intrigue, and Tranquil. These two are the mixatives, so it's in Snowcap and Pearl. So these are the colors I'll be using. I'll try to name them as I'm going along, but forgive me if I don't. Okay, so I've mixed the resin. Uh, I love how clear it is. It's super, super clear and I'm going to separate it into smaller cups. I've mixed it two fluid ounces. That's how much this cup can hold. Um, so when you're working with one-to-one -one ratio epoxy resin, you wanna make sure that it is exact. Um, if you're looking for a bit more about how to mix resin correctly, I have videos on that that I will link in the description box below. So I'm just separating out the resin into these little mixing cups because I want to work with a smaller amount for certain colors that I'm going to be mixing. 
For the alloys, I'm actually gonna be making wings out of them. So I have a wing mold, a wing mold right here that I'm going to be using these three separate cuts with. And I'm going to shake the alloys really well. You can hear in the bottles, there's a metallic ball inside, and that's really important because it mixes the ink. Make sure that you shake it really well. I'll be starting with mind. And I'm just gonna pour or drop. Ooh, I like the tips on these. Those tips are perfect. Usually alcohol inks come with a larger rounded tip and then I end up putting it in another bottle anyway because it's not exactly <laughs> helpful. <laughs> the rounded tip isn't that great. So I just put one drop in there to start with and we see how it's moving in there. But I want to mix this because I'm going to be making metallic wings. One drop wasn't enough for the look I want. So I'm going to go with two more drops and stir. And so this is about a quarter ounce in this cup. So I've added three drops and it's a little transparent, but that's kind of cool for the wings. You don't want them to be too thick looking, right? So it still has a majestic kind of feel. So here we go, just pouring it in to my mold, all the way to the top. Oh, this is so pretty. Okay, put my cap on that one. And I'm gonna repeat the process, but I'm actually gonna add a little bit more ink I'm going to add a little bit more ink to the next one. off to the side. For this next portion, we're gonna be using our regular alcohol inks. Here I have Purple Twilight, Limeade, and Honeycomb. With these ones, there's not a metallic ball inside, so don't feel like you have to shake them up. They're already mixed. So I'm gonna be using these with the snow cap. The snow cap mixative has to be shaken, so make sure that you shake that one really well. pearls and these have to be shaken really well. Now that I can see they're mixed, I'm going to start with Tranquil. Now I've never seen these react in resin before, but I am so excited. I'm going to use the pearl mixative with tangerine. So tangerine, or I'm sorry, with Valencia. And Valencia is an orange color and it is not a pearl. But I'm going to mix the pearl additive and see what we get. I'm tempted to put some snow cap in there and I just might. <laughs> So I want to make 
make one more heart using one of the standard alcohol inks and the pearl mixative. And I'm going to use Flamingo, which is not a color I showed before, but I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> love that color it's really beautiful so let's get the air bubbles out with our heat gun and now we're gonna let these sit until they're fully cured so it's the next morning and our hearts are cured we can tell because they're hard and so are our wings um I'm going to unmold each one but when we're dealing with these three, what I'm looking for, see if the whites have caused the inks to drop. So if the white isn't heavy enough, for lack of a better word, it won't cause the inks to drop and you won't see like the white at the bottom. And that's what I really wanna to see to make sure that this mixative, the snowcap mixative is what I need it to be in order to get the ink drop technique. So let's start with the wings though, because these are really cute, really small. I can't wait to see what they look like. Okay, so let's just pop these out of the mold. Remember these are, are our um, alloy alcohol inks. And so if you remember, I used just a little bit, maybe three drops of the alloy ink for this color. And you can see that they're a little bit transparent because I didn't use a lot of the ink, but you can definitely see the way that it's got that pearlescent, almost metallic um, look to it. But it's also transparent because I didn't put a lot of it in there. That's really good. And then with this one, I used a little bit more of the ink. Let's pop these two out together. And I'll put it on my hand and you can see that they're more um, condensed, I guess. The color is more evident. You can really see it. Okay, and then our final one, we put the most amount of ink into the resin. Oh yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. So the alloys are metallic, they're shimmery, they're so beautiful. These wings came out absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm really happy with how they look and the metallic look and feel of them. They're really beautiful, so yay to those. All right, let's start with our hearts. And remember, this was the clear purple color and that mixed all the way through really well it's transparent the color is clear and very consistent it's beautiful all right next up is the ink drop so what we're looking for is seeing if the white dropped down to the bottom um, because if it's sitting at the surface here, that means it's not really heavy enough to get that ink drop technique. Now these are shallow molds. Oh, look at that, we got it. The white dropped to the bottom, that's what we wanna see. And you can see from the side view, hopefully you can see that. From the side view, you can see those lines of the color dropping down to the front. Oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. Now, here's the thing. I was using a very shallow mold. These hearts are not very deep. So when you're dealing with ink drop, it's great to have a mold that's a little thicker so that you can get um, that drop to look really, really nice instead of smashed. So the way that some of this white is looking smashed 
at the front is not because of the inks itself, it's because the mold isn't very thick. But I didn't want to mix up a ton of resin to do like a full coaster. Um, I just wanted to see if the ink actually dropped to the bottom, which it did. So I know that when I make a coaster out of this, the ink is gonna drop perfectly. It's gonna look great. Um, I'm gonna get those, those lines and that depth that I really like and the movement of the ink. You can see it here in the background. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's pop out the orange one. Once again, yes, we definitely have the white dropping down to the front. You can see from the side view, the movement of the ink is beautiful. This is great. This is the one that I'm going to take it out of frame for a second just to look and see because this is the one that we used the pearl mixative as well with the snow cap mixative and what I'm seeing and it'll be really hard to see on camera but you can see some of the shimmeriness in the background so you might not want to use um the pearl mixative with the snow cap if you're really trying to get a shimmery effect because it's not as pronounced. Now maybe if I mixed a little bit more of the pearl with it, we'd see more of the shimmery effect, but I'm just absolutely loving how this color moved <laughs> and how the ink dropped. Um, this is really beautiful. And, and I can tell that if the, if the mold were thicker, we wouldn't have these big white spots. Um, we would have more of these kind of spots where the color was in front of the white a little bit more, but because of the mold being so shallow, that's what we get. All right, let's pop our next ink drop one out. These were with the pearl ink set and the snow cap mixative. And once again, we see the drop. We can see that the white is at the front and if, if our mold weren't as shallow, we'd have that color in front. But what I'm seeing for sure is the shimmer effect on these colors. Use the pearl inks with the snow cap and you'll see that drop and the shimmer rather than just using the pearl mixative with snow cap with um a standard ink so let's let's take a look at these i don't know that the camera is going to pick up the colors super well but i can absolutely tell the shimmer effect on the blue, green, and pink heart over just the orange heart. Um, I would absolutely use the pearls for ink drop. Oops. I would absolutely use the pearls for ink drop. They are beautiful. Oh my goodness. I love it. Absolutely cool. All right. And our last one was just with our standard alcohol ink with glitter and the pearl mixative all mixed together <laughs> and you can see that it's beautiful the color is beautiful you can see the pearl shimmer on it you can see the glitter everything is as it should be the color i used here was flamingo and then the pearl mixative and then some pink glitter and it's great these are so beautiful Okay, so my final review of the Ranger line of resin and alcohol inks is that I really enjoyed them. The resin cured really well. Oops, it dried hard. Um, it cured clear and beautifully. Uh, it's fantastic. I have I have no negative thoughts about it at all. Uh, it's perfect the, the way it comes in this in this small um, box of two ounces of resin, two ounces of hardener is enough for you to make some small projects. 
I made all of these and I still have about half a bottle of each left over. So if you're gonna be making small projects, I would recommend this. Now, if you're gonna be making large coasters or ornaments, I would opt for um, a resin that comes in a larger quantity for the price. Um, but otherwise, if you're just gonna be making small, small items or you're just starting out and just wanna play with it and not invest too much, I would recommend starting with this kit. Um, now the alcohol inks. I am very, very happy with the assortment of colors. As I showed you at the beginning of the video, Tim sent me so many colors to play with and that's just a fraction, a fraction, a small fraction of the Ranger line of inks. Um, they have various colors of the pearls and I'm sure they're gonna be making more, but the pearls for me are like the, the thing I've been wanting. Um, <laughs> I love that I can try the alcohol ink technique with pearls because before um, you would have to do alcohol inks and maybe a mica powder and, and that can get tricky if you're wanting the, the pearl effect plus ink drop. But with this, it's, it's all inclusive. It's already there. You don't have to play around and waste product. And so if you're wanting to create something with a, a, a pearly finish plus the ink drop technique, I would highly recommend the Ranger Alcohol Pearls. They, they come in packs of three like this um, to where you, you have a nice set. Um, and so I would highly recommend them. Um, as for the alloys, uh, I think that they're beautiful, as you can see here with the metallic effect. Um, they mix well with glitter and inclusions, so that's a plus as well. Um, one of the critiques that I have is that if you're buying the mixing cut pack, um, the critique is for Ranger, actually. As someone who mixes a lot of this stuff, having the lines etched on the inside of the cup and these little... I don't know what they are, but the little like lines right there at the bottom of the cup on the inside, are it's, it's really annoying. Um, when you're mixing the epoxy, you wanna have a completely smooth interior of the cup so that you can make sure to get all of the compound mixed thoroughly. But when you have these like lines and creases and grooves that the, the parts can get stuck in, it, it adds to the risk of not mixing the epoxy thoroughly, which would then impact curing. And especially since these boxes are so small and maybe for people who are just starting out, that would lead to them not having a clean cure. Um, so my advice to Ranger would be to put the etchings and all that on the outside of the cup and let the inside of the cup be completely smooth so that it would mix thoroughly um, each time. But that's a small critique um, with that. Another positive actually that I wanted to talk about is the, the inside nozzle of the alcohol ink. Okay, the inside nozzle of this, of the bottles is just fantastic. Like you don't have to transfer these to another bottle. Let me show you what I mean by that. So these bottles are from two other alcohol ink brands. And I'm gonna show you why I prefer the Ranger nozzle cap rather than these two. So these are two really popular brands. And the first one here is the kind of nozzle that I'm talking about that I absolutely hate. It's rounded and the hole is pretty big. And so when you are dropping it, you get these large swatches of ink that come out and there's not a lot of control with this. Um, and then with this other brand, oh, let me use this one. With this other brand, they come like this in this kind of cap, but I don't know if you can tell, but the very tip of this cap, it's actually sealed off. So you have to cut the tip off in order to have the ink flow. So when you cut it, it kind of ends up looking like this. 
you have this really large hole and no control. A lot of ink comes out at once, like I said, causing large splotches and not a lot of control of where it goes. So in order to remedy that situation, I usually buy another type of empty bottle, which is this, and it comes with a needle tip nozzle, as you can see right here. And I transfer these inks into this container and that's how they are, um, which is an added expense and causes a lot of, it, it can cause a lot of clutter in your craft room and mess as well. Um, and also what I have realized with the needle tips is that what ends up happening is a stream of alcohol ink comes out, um, instead of a drop. So you have to be really careful with the amount of pressure that you put on the bottle itself or else you end up having a stream of it. And that has happened to me so many times. Um, and so with the Ranger line though, it's like, they thought of that because you get the control of a needle tip um, nozzle and the bottle isn't soft, so you have more control. It's not as easy to squeeze is what I should say. These are a softer plastic, so even light pressure causes it to squeeze out really fast, whereas with these, the plastic is harder and allows for more control in the drop. So hopefully that makes sense there. Also, when, when you transfer your inks to bottles like these, you can't store them in a really effective and um, space-saving way. So I'm going to clear all of this out and show you what I mean by that. Okay, so this is how I store my alcohol inks. Uh, all of these are stored upside down like this into this container um, and I can fit quite a few. I don't remember how many, I think it's on the outside of the box. Um, each one of these trays can hold 32 inks, which means total I'm storing 64 in this box. But when I'm using this type of bottle, I can't because it won't fit in the hole and also won't be able to close effectively. Um, so, and obviously keeping the inks in their original containers, I'm gonna get the maximum amount of ink out of this rather than transferring, leaving residuals in, in the bottle and then not enough in this. So I really like what Ranger has done with the design of the bottle and the tip. Um, and I can store all of these and when I finally take them out of the package in here as well. I have plenty of space in this. So that's my full review of the Ranger um, line of inks and resin. I think that it's well made, well thought out. They have the full stamp of approval from me. Uh, I'm so happy and thankful to Tim for sending me these and I'm looking forward to working with them in the future. So that's it. I hope that this review has been helpful and if you have any questions drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you.